Hi guys and welcome back. I'm super excited to bring you this review, not just because it's from PNSO, who isn't excited with another PNSO offering, but because Ceratopsians are my second favorite group of dinosaurs. But strangely, I haven't done one in a long time. In fact, um, the last one was five years ago with the sideshow Triceratops. That was a mistake. Now it's time to erase that mistake. I remember way back, only two Pachyrhinosaurus skulls were known, and at that time there was some doubt as to whether this was a hornless ceratopsian with a boss, or whether the boss was the base for a keratinous horn. I still remember this interpretation in that old dinosaur series, narrated by the always sexy Barbara Feldon. Great herds of ceratopsians traveling in search of food. Of course, we now know that this was just a boss, and we have not just one, but three different species of Pachyrhinosaurus proving that without a doubt. Now, this is PNSO's Brian the Pachyrhinosaurus. And when I saw the release images, I knew I had to get it. Now, I did get the PNSO Cynoceratops, which I do like, but I didn't think it was anything to write home about. With this, when I received it, I immediately wrote two letters, an email, and spanned my social media with a fake guru course. Here he is out of box. And using an estimate of 7 meters, which is about 22 feet long, and this one being 17.5 centimeters, which is 6.9 inches, happily makes this very close to the one in 40 of scale, my personal holy standard. Now the showcase of the animal is of course the head, and I'm absolutely delighted with the detail here. Now the boss, really the nasal boss and the supraorbital ones, have a craggy appearance that's very real, what I call lived in. Now many models, like this still beautiful safari, have a very flattened, almost too perfect look. But in this, you can imagine perhaps due to use or injury from butting rivals or simply uneven growth, there's a rugosity that's just very organic. Now, other details include the rostral comb. I like how they've given the rostral a highly beaked overhanging appearance, which together with the comb, uh, give you this very nice uh, corrugated jaggedness in profile. And with this often reconstructed unicorn style horns in Pachyrhinosaurus, um, I love just how the different horns erupt in different directions, like the result of a crazy growth spurt in puberty, ending with this adult result. On the frill, epiparietals 2 and 3 are present in the right orientations, and I'm pleased that epiparietals 2 are asymmetrical, which agrees with most fossils that have been found. The epoxipitals are very clearly defined from the frill margin. Uh, there appears to be a ridge of raised scales outlining the parietal bones around the fenestrae, and stretched across is the skin with so many minute scale details. In fact, these scales fill up any expanse of skin between the more outre structures. On the jawline, around the nostril, and on the underside. And you know, all these features, uh, the horns, the rostral comb, the rather wide gap between the nasal and supraorbital bosses, I'm guessing the species is Pachyrhinosaurus lacustae, but if one of you real experts know, please comment below, because hey, I'd like to know. Now I'm sure you've noticed by now the amazing paintwork, the shades and the fades in the head, deferring in the frill, from around the foramen, uh, from the base of the horns to the tips. I especially like the rather pearly appearance of these unicorn spikes, like very polished keratin, almost looking like a fingernail. Of course, the bright red orange emphasizes the main highlight of this ceratopsian, the bosses, making them stand out, really doing them justice, either as a function of sexual display or as a, as a, as a warning signal to would-be predators. And um, you see hints of this orange hue infused to a lesser extent in the frill and the underside of the neck. And so everything just ties in together so beautifully. 
The blue irises are unusual and look almost human. And you know, now that I think about this, uh, they named this Brian. And Liam Neeson has blue eyes. The spelling for Brian is different, but it's <laughs> just a thought. You know, maybe if, if they produce another companion, Pachyrhinosaurus, they can call him Mills. Now, as for the rest, I don't know where to begin. You see how the scalation varies regionally, how the skin creases are hinted at, but instinctively, you'll know they're there simply because of the way the scales flow in such a real manner. Uh, you see here in the neck, the sides, around the elbows, and the tail. Now, one thing I absolutely love is the way the osteoderms are colored. Now, some are differentiated in a brighter yellow, um, yet still pretty subtly that while they do announce themselves, it's with a cough rather than a shout. In other areas, they're undifferentiated from the skin, like here in the flanks, uh, and some of it here in the hips. So it's just so natural and realistic looking. Uh, indeed, if I could use one word to describe the paint job, it's subtle. Uh, look at these stripes. You know they're there, but it's so softly painted and layered that uh, you almost feel that the stripes are under the skin. Uh, look at the color transition from dark to light. It's all so seamless and smooth. And you see even the spots here uh, on the thighs, on the shoulders, they're really under the skin. Uh, the feet are very dark and they slowly fade up very, very nicely. Um, you know, it really looks like uh, pigmentation. Yeah, that's the word I'm looking for. All of these look like the results of real life pigmentation and not paint. On the underside, again, you see the same, uh, the hints of orange uh, echoing this splash here. And while here, you can also see all the wonderful scale, texture and detail. I like how stocky he looks with thick muscle legs and a short tail. And this whole thing just speaks power to me. Well capable of spurts of damaging speed into the shins of a predator or the head of a rival. Now the proportions just make sense. Instinctually, you look at the head, it just makes sense. Uh, you feel confident that the big heavy head is well supported and balanced by everything postcranially. And as for the pose, it's one of tentativeness as if uh, he was interrupted because he noticed something out of the ordinary, perhaps a predator or an approaching rival. And you view this from any angle, you know, that the tops the sides and most of all the front just look at that this guy is ready for business so how does the paint work compare with the release images well one thing i especially like was the early palette of this model a brown and ochre team and how these brighter ochre osteoderms pop out on the model, you can see they've opted to add in a darker color that fades ventrally and then just drops into this. So you still get most of it, but you gain more complexity. And they've added these darker feet, uh, which the prototype images didn't have, creating a lovely fade up. They've made the orange a lot brighter and stronger to emphasize the bosses and yet all the subtleties that you see on the prototype image, it's all here. Now truly, if you ask me between the two, which is the prototype, I'd say this one. This is truly a case where the actual model not just matches the prototype release, it actually surpasses it. So five thumbs up. To end off, I'm extremely delighted with this PNSO. It matches up not just to the initial promise, it's over-delivered in spades. 
this Pecky Rhinosaurus is an embarrassment of riches in detail, in quality, in paintwork, and I declare this to be truly masterpiece level. I only hope PNSO hasn't shot itself in the foot because this is something that is going to be damn near impossible to match, let alone top. Go get this one for sure, guys. I'll see you soon.